Good morning, Manchester, and welcome to Award 13. And my special guests today are Mike Lopez, who we all know is a long-serving alderman at large. He was the past commander of the Veterans Council of Manchester. And we have Bill Roy of the Sweeney, both uh, Mike and Bill are of Sweeney Post Number 2, the American Legion, which I uh, recently joined. And uh, Bill, you're the alternate national executive committeeman for the state of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. which is quite a title. And uh, we're going to talk about Veterans Day, and then we're going to talk about issues like the, the Veterans Administration and and uh, issues of interest to veterans. I'd just like to, as my uh, viewers know, I was running for state rep in Ward 10, 
not Ward 13, but Ward 10. And I came in dead last, <laughs> although not by uh, much, no. but still dead last. And uh, But I tell you, uh, Mike, uh, the thing that hurt most was Carol Shea Porter losing. John, could we see the pictures of Carol? That's uh, there. You are, Mike. You can look. We're not supposed to look over there. There's <laughs> me. There's Kathy Staub, Carol, you, and Paul Martina. And that was we. She, Carol, of all politicians I've ever. There you are again. And she came to the polls at Ward 10. I got my picture taken with her. But of all the politicians I've ever met, and I'm a journalist. My first interview was Jerry Brown back in 1980 when he's running for president. Wow. There we are at the polls, and. Uh, she is the most normal person I've ever met that's a politician. And uh, I have to say, I'm very sad that she lost. She only lost by less than 7,000 votes of 200,000. And uh, the work she's done for veterans is just remarkable. And Abby Sickles, who's at the office and has ha handles veterans issues, she was just amazing. Because my health care provider is the VA, the mm. Veterans Hospital in Manchester, and I can't tell you how much Abby has helped veterans up there. And uh, I could tell you stories, but we, we only have a half hour, right. <laughs> and it would, be, it would take an hour to tell all the stories of the people she helped. I'll just say one thing about Carol. Uh, she was a Army an army wife, you know, her uh, Jean, her husband, Jean, was a Vietnam era veteran. And what she told me, what people said, the first thing she asked about in the day, it, when she called in the office in the day, about veterans. Yep. And uh, she was just an amazing person. I, I, feel, uh, I feel sad, sadder than myself losing, that she's not, not going to be with us after January 3rd. Well, unfortunately, the 2% negative advertising they do in marketing and politicians uh, holds true so yeah so what are you gonna do she's a good person she was, and i'm sure she'll find her way in life too oh yeah great friend of veterans oh uh mike you don't every year you uh, organize the veterans day uh the veterans day festivities in manchester don't you well I, I did for 20 years. Uh, I'm, I more uh, consult with uh, the people that are running the Manchester Veterans Council, which I'm a trustee on, on yes. the board. And uh, we have a lot of young people that are stepping forward to take over, and, and I have a lot of input into it. But uh, I give credit to the commander of Post 79, who's the adjutant of the Manchester Veterans Council, who put the program together, and others that help with the parade so we're starting to get a lot of um, uh, younger vets involved yes, yes. which is good and uh, and that's what i strive for to try to get the younger vets involved because some of us are getting a little a little older than a little long in the two right so i credit this with uh, with the uh, adjutant and the commander of the manchester veterans council dan Bellavo, and others that are on the council for putting the program together this year John, could we see that picture, the newspaper clipping from 1930? That is my grandfather, Claude J. Hopwood Sr. Now, when I was thinking of running in Ward 10 because of the French-Canadian population, and I'm part French-Canadian, I was thinking of running as John Claude. But because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm John C. Oh, that would have been a good catchy thing, right? I'm John C. <laughs> yes, I'm John C. Hopwood as a professional writer. But somebody has said, uh, maybe you should be John Cash and Hopwood. That might help you a little more. In <laughs> Ward 10. Right. Yeah, yeah, Ward <laughs> 10. That's but sure. that was my grandfather, and he was one of the veterans that came back from World War One who created the American Legion. He was the commandant of the Londonderry Post because he's the family, the Hopwood Whittemore family's from Litchfield. You know, we go back to like 1720 when George II, mm. we were from Massachusetts, gave us Litchfield and uh, held on to it for a long time, but the Great Depression came. Maybe you better get rid of that 13, Ward 13, <laughs> or is that Ward 14? Ward 14. <laughs> Used to be 14 words, wards. Oh, yeah. 13 was always my lucky number, though. Well, I don't I know. About <laughs> <laughs> after, the, after Tuesday, I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> But the Legion is a very important thing to my grandfather, and it was very important to my father. And my brother's in the Legion, and I, uh, my father always wanted me to join the Legion, but I fell into that donut hole. Remember, we were looking. Uh, one thing about Mike, uh, can I tell a personal story? I remember uh, 
uh, we were at a Democratic dinner, and Mike was right opposite me. And I was saying to my fr good friend Gary Hamer, who I grew up with, we in kindergarten, through best man at his wedding, and godfather to his son, I says, geez, I wonder if Mike Lopez is going to run for, you know, state rep. And, he's, and all of a sudden, Gary says, there's Mike Lopez. But I first met you, Mike, and you can't remember, like, like 1973 or 74, when you were a recruiter here in Manchester, and I was 13 or 14 years old. You enlisted my sister Debbie into the WAX, wow. the Women's Auxiliary Corps. And when Debbie got pregnant, you couldn't be in the, even into the 80s with a baby, you could you had to get out of the you army. Had to get out, yeah. And as she was, she became, she worked for you as a recruiter here in Manchester yep. and her husband, Peter Osgood. Right. And uh, when we were doing the runs with Carol, Carol, one thing, she didn't know that you were a recruiter. How many people did you recruit? I recruited 137 people in the Manchester area. Uh, to go into the service and and uh, I, I've kept track over a number of people a number of years there's about 20 of them working in the post office today yep. well some have retired too so and uh, two are FBI agents uh, and the rest are got good jobs so just I was army veteran uh, uh, you were army what was your MOS I was uh, one military of the, occupation specialist. Right, occupational specialist. Uh, well, I, when I was growing up, I had I had to get some discipline, so I went in the infantry right away. Four years. I knew the, you were eleven Bravo. Oh, yeah, eleven Bravo <laughs> I knew he was in an the 11 infantry. Bravo. But after that, I went into photography, and uh, and then then my last seven years, I was an army recruiter here in Manchester. I had nine different stations in New England. Right, because I remember there was a Berlin station yeah. and the yeah. different stations. Bill, what was your MOS? Uh, no MOS. I was in the Navy. You were in the Navy. <laughs> yeah, four years in the Navy. <laughs> My father was Navy. World War II, DAV. He wanted me to be in the Navy. No, he wanted me to be in the Navy and the Marine Corps, but I was colorblind. I wanted to be a Marine when I was a kid, but mm -hmm. you have to have perfect color vision to be a Marine because everybody in the Corps has to be a rifleman. And... Uh, I remember taking the test with a recruiter. My father lived in Atlanta. In Decatur, Georgia, I scored the highest on the ASVAB. They were so thrilled to get me. But there was the Navy chief. Remember what Navy chiefs used to look like? They still, you know, oh yeah, they still do. <laughs> what they call a Navy chest, you know, all this big chest. And we went through the color book, you know. After three pages, he says, he's so disgusted. We don't have to go any further. So that was the end of my dream to be a Marine. But that's why I became military intelligence in the Army because that's practically... All you can be. Because you have to be, as a rifleman, you have to have perfect color vision so you know who you're shooting. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Camouflage that. What, what did you do in the, uh, what, what, did you have a right arm rate or a left arm rate? Uh, ours was on the left arm. All okay. our rates were on the left arm. Uh, I was oh, in the, the, in the World War II, there was, because my father always talked the distinction between no. whether you were right arm rate or a left arm I rate. I came out as an E5. Yeah. I, I served on tankers the whole time, refueling ships and transferring supplies. It was very interesting. It was a long, hard work. It was, yeah. uh, but uh, I do it over again. It was a uh, very a lot of a lot of fun, a lot Did of experiences. You, how long were you in the navy? Four years. Four years. I was mm -hmm. four. The moment I got out of boot camp, I never saw shore duty. I was on ships the whole time, <laughs> the way I wanted it. Yeah, I couldn't swim, so I joined the army. But, uh, <laughs> Mike, tell us about uh, uh, the Veterans Day. Well, Veterans Day is this Tuesday and um, the November the eleventh. And, and uh, one thing I'm going to clear up with a lot of people on Veterans Day, Veterans Day is for the living, the people who came home. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people get mixed up between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Right. You know. And so this is for the living. Um, Tuesday, November the 11th, the parade will uh, stop out, step off at uh, 1030 in the morning and reach City Hall by 11 for the 11th day, 11th hour uh, uh, when we were supposed to end all wars. The war to end, my, <laughs> my grandfather was in the war to end all wars. Right, and so, but anyways, uh, taps will be played at City Hall, and then then after the taps, we go to Veterans uh, Memorial Park and have a, a 15 or 20 minute ceremony there. Um, we have the three high school bands will be in, there in the uh, parade, and many scouts and other veterans groups. Uh, uh, probably would have more, but the, the Veterans uh, uh, Cemetery in Bosquin is having a ceremony at the same right. time. So a lot of veterans go up there with their families. Um, so on all in all, it would probably be uh, uh, from 10.30 to about 12, 12.30, uh, and then we'll be completed. Um, like I said, it, uh, 
Sam Codwell, who's the adjutant, put the program together, and I think it's going to be very, very nice. Uh, the Memorial High School uh, will play taps at Veterans Park, and, and the national anthem by Memorial High School. So, and there's a few speakers. One of the one of the uh, speakers is going to be Veterans Counts founder Michael Salter, and um, then there'll be a presentation of the Anthony Tony, Tony Karen Award, uh, which is given to a veteran that the Manchester Veterans Council decides that it has given a lot to the veterans. And and uh, uh, this year we've selected an individual who just passed away who was our commander uh, of Sweeney Post. So uh, that award would be given to him. Uh, but Post 79, uh, Jutras Post, the VFW, the DAV, DAV 18 that used to meet at the... Uh, DAV means Disabled American Veterans. Right. My uh, father was DAV from World War II. They used to meet at the Veterans Hospital, and now they meet at Sweeney Post, and the VFW closed its doors and sold the building. Right, right. That's and so the VFW, will be, uh, they meet at Sweeney Post also, and they'll be joining us for the uh, Veterans Day Parade. So, And then and the firing of the volleys at the park will be Sweeney Post. Uh, trying to get a, a lot of younger veterans involved in, 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 in the American Legion to uh, become honor guard people or right. flag bearers or riflemen uh, for playing a salute because uh, I think might have read an article where a union leader had that we're, uh, they're cutting down on funds but we're pressing on to try to get those funds back for right. servicemen that died that they they get the National Guard to uh, uh, come in and present the flag uh, to the next of kin. So we're working on that, and there's so many things to work on. And, and of course, now we just have to wait and for the new Congress to get on their feet, I guess. And, and we'll go from there. If we get everybody to pass before, that's a good thing, you know? Yes. One of the things, one of my father being DAV, I went to many a veterans hospital with him. And uh, my stepmother was a General Motors executive. Now, in those big corporations like the military, like with officers, in fact, a lot of ex-officers we were executives at General Motors, and you moved you every three years. So I've been to many, many different VA hospitals. I remember all the World War II vets. They are, there's not many oh, yeah. left now. And uh, <coughs> it was strange to see that now the Vietnam vets, you know, over like 20 years have been, are now, the older, yeah. the older vets is an occasional Korean vet, but uh, now the young vets that are coming back, yeah, it's, uh, the young vets now at the Veterans Hospital. Well, like we at Sweeney Post, uh, uh, we used to have 564 uh, World War II veterans down. Right. We're down to about 159, somewhere around there, of World War II veterans left. So, and now we got the Vietnam era that's over 500 uh, uh, Vietnam veterans that are taking the lead and we'll be looking for the Iraq veterans and Afghanistan veterans yes. to uh, come in and, and take part in, in, in a great cause to, of helping veterans, you know, and I'm going to let Bill uh, okay. talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, about the American Legion because a lot of people have the wrong impression of the American Legion and, and we do a lot for veterans and uh, and I'm glad and proud to be a member uh, for over 40 years. So. Well, I'm glad that you have the sons of the American Legion, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to vo uh, join the Legion post. That's true. You, yeah. you came in at the wrong time or something. Right. It was a, <laughs> I missed it by three months on one side and nine months on the other. Right. But, uh, so, uh, Bill, why don't you take... Like, uh, tell us about the American Legion, and you can even br bring up the sons of the American Legion. Sure. It was founded in 1919 by a um, group of people that were in uh, World War I, and they were waiting to come home. They didn't have the planes like we did. They had to wait several months. And um, uh, Theodore Roosevelt Jr. Was, is considered the father of the American Legion, so they decided, let's have a meeting in Paris, France. So actually, our first pulse is in, uh, on a foreign territory. It was in Paris. Paris. My uh, grandfather stayed for a year or so oh, yeah. in the Occupy occupied forces in Paris and I don't know why he was in Paris and and what was it the Saar in Germany mm -hmm. but he didn't want to come home but his his mother said you you know the army was not a real career for a Whittemore mm -hmm. and so he came back to Litchfield but uh, Paris right 
So they wanted to get uh, together. They had the Grand Old Army, the Republic before that, and that was mostly for officers. But with Theodore Roosevelt and uh, Francis Dollier and all these uh, forefathers of our uh, organization says, we want to get everybody involved, and when we come back, right. we want to push for veterans' rights to get the care that they deserve. And they had a, a caucus in um, St. Louis, and then they had a uh, in Ju uh, Ju July, and then November of that year, they had the uh, first convention. So they really uh, started go, go running r right away with it. Now, I've read uh, when the veterans came back, uh, you know, back then they did not have the, any idea of PTSD. In fact, if you had shell shock then, they might, particularly if you were in the British Army, they'd just put you against the wall and shoot you. Wow. But a lot of people came back with wounds and no, you know, there were no veterans' hospitals then. There was a national health service type of hospital they put many veterans in. But mm -hmm. that was mostly for handling tuberculosis victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was really no health care services for veterans after World War I. Mm -hmm. And they didn't recognize PTSD. And you would just th a lot of them were just thrown back in the community. So that must have been a major factor in the Legion. And... When did the Veterans Administration, which used to be, what was it called? Before, what was the Veterans Administration? 1930? The mm -hmm. Legion was very instrumental in creating the Veterans Administration, was it not? Oh, and yes. Veterans Hospitals. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And uh, they, they're the ones that got the ball rolling on that. And um, the Veterans um, Benefits Association, they also, also got pensions for the uh, World War I veterans. In fact, um, they had a... a uh, well, I'm not saying a riot in Washington D.C. That uh, General oh, the McCarthy, bonus march, the bonus the march, because they never um, they never received their pensions, and the, the, we were pushing that for the whole time. And uh, actually, General MacArthur broke that up with some uh, violence. It was people and were Eisenhower was his uh, yeah, Major yeah, Eisenhower yeah. was his adjutant, and they didn't get it to 1945 mm -hmm. because once again, my grandfather being in the Legion. It took a long time to get that bonus. And actually, that segues very well because they talk about stimulus programs, on the stimulus programs on the Bush and uh, Obama. They really didn't work that well. The number one stimulus program ever in the history of this country was the GI Bill. Oh, it's amazing. And yes. that was all done by the American Legion. Not one of the other organizations came on board. We had to do it alone. In fact, Morris K. Devine was an instrumental in that. Frank Knox, who was our first. Um, Frank Knox from New Hampshire. Right, from yes, Manchester. Yeah, absolutely. He was, our first, he was our first department commander. The interesting story is when we put in for our uh, charters, Laconia and Manchester put in it on the same day. So we caught this, and we says, well, how are we going to do this? Well, we'll. Manchester says, well, you give us the uh, first uh, department commander, which is the state commander, right. and you can have two, and uh, you can have one, and we'll do two, and that's how that uh, happened. So, uh, is, that, is that why it's Sweeney Post number two? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Because I always wonder if there was a Sweeney Post number one, because I think Sweeney, the, his memorial's over in the west side, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wasn't he from the west side? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Henry J. Sweeney Post. From Ward 10. And, uh, he was the first Ward 10. Which you're a, a you're a Ward 10. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we yeah. go there, uh, we go around all the uh, different parks and at uh, Sweeney Park uh, on Memorial Day. Right. So we go around and give a 21-gun salute to about 26 squares in the city. And uh, we're pretty good. He was the first Manchester resident killed in World War One. That's right. why oh, I okay. post his name right. after him. That's why. Mm -hmm. I and, know. And uh, Don Burr, uh, the... Uh, I don't know which ward it is, Ward 11, where the St. Mary's Bank is. There was oh, Drew, a, uh, who di he Drew died Fish. on, uh, he died at Pearl Harbor. There's a veteran. Of Rosmus? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah it was Rosmus. Yeah. 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 I thought uh, back uh, to Veterans Day, just, just a little bit. Uh, I know the program is coming to a winding up here, and I just want to make well, sure. Well, if you'd like, we could do another half hour, if well, John we, will allow us. Yeah, but uh, on Veterans Day, particularly uh, coming this Tuesday, uh, you know, like I said, Veterans Day is for the living. Those that came back, and uh, we remember all the, all the comrades that we lost on Memorial Day and all throughout the year. But we want, we want to make sure that people know it's for the living. So if you see a veteran, you know, uh, just thank them. But another important thing about watching a parade going down Elm Street is people sitting on a curb or uh, having a good time uh, stand up when the American flag comes by. Of course. You know, and put your hand over your heart. We try to teach all that uh, when we go to schools and show people how to fold the flag, how to display the American flag. 
you know, you got to respect that flag. You know, it's our flag. A lot of people died for it. Yes. And so, therefore, pay the respect by either standing up, putting your hands over your heart, saluting it. And you'll see some old veterans on Elm Street uh, that uh, do that today. They'll be out there. Yes. They can't march anymore. And I've seen people get out of their wheelchair and stand up. So uh, people do remember. But Veterans Day, November the 11th. Um, Going to have a lot of veterans in the parade, the Memorial High School bands. Uh, uh, Usually, you have some. Uh, some. Well, is there going to be the Jeep this year? Yeah, there'll be. There'll have be, the 1942 Jeep. Uh, they'll have some uh, World War uh, II uh, vehicles in there, and also they'll have some uh, Humvee, uh, good Humvee this year that they've been using. Um, but um, anybody's welcome in the parade. Uh, if you haven't been in the program, you're naturally going to third division uh, because you didn't get your request in in time. So. Right. But uh, it will be hopefully uh, a nice day, uh, and we don't get any snow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. I've got a uh, – I would like to add one thing. New Hampshire was critical in the move of bringing uh, – Vet, uh, bringing Veterans Day back to November 11th. Oh, Remember, absolutely. Remember, it, it was a Monday holiday. And I think William Loeb, we might disagree with him about many things I did as a kid, but he and uh, was very adamant about that Veterans Day should be on Veterans Day. And the New Hampshire congressional <coughs> delegation at Norris Cotton and them really well, pushed for that. Yeah, and, and it's true. And, and it, I found out the, the other day that Trinity's having high school on, on – Really? Uh, on Veterans Day, and they're taking off Monday. So I couldn't figure that out. So I have a couple guys that uh, teach up there, and they, they were going to give me an answer why. Unless now, if they're having a ceremony up there on Veterans right. Day, that that's appropriate. But uh, I think it'd probably be the only school in session. Right. So, but uh, at the park, uh, uh, West High uh, uh, and J R O T C will do the Pledge of Allegiance, invocation by Jim Carvis. And uh, Dan Belleville will give a few words. And, uh, of course, Mayor uh, Ted Gasses will be marching down Elm Street with us and, and also at the park. So okay. he'll be the guest speaker for the city. And when do, uh, we only have two minutes left in this segment. You will come back for another half hour, right? We can talk about veterans issues. When does it start? Uh, the parade starts off at 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. in Webster and Elm Street. Yeah, you have to step up by 10.35 in order to okay. be at City Hall with the pace. So at 11 o'clock, you want everybody at City Hall so that they can uh, play taps uh, for the 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month. So uh, we we usually make it. So there won't be any lingering up there. They got to get okay. off by 10:30. That 30. military mm. discipline, you're famous. Absolutely, <laughs> so you got to move. So and and we'll have a good time. We'll get the fire trucks down and let the people know okay. we're coming because they can during Veterans Day they can blow their sirens and everything else. But on Memorial Day we don't allow it. So. Well, it used to be they told the bells at that yep. hour in all the churches. Well, remember the siren? Uh, the yes. We used to have. We it. used to have the air raid sign in case the Soviet Union. Now we use a police to. cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, that time again. I, we have to sign off for Ward 13 for this week, but come back next week and we'll have Bill and Mike. We'll be discussing veterans' issues. Night. Made 
of this Then at the wedding bells One house where lovers dwell Three little kids for the flavor Stare carefully through the days See how the flavor stays These are the dreams you will see This is blessings from above So the generous me was love One man, one wife, one love Memories are made of this Memories are made of this Good evening Manchester and welcome once again to Ward 13 Tonight's uh, guest is the man, I, what would I call it? Mr. Veteran, but you uh, that's not a real rant. That would be the Navy, right? Mr. Uh, Mike Lopez, uh, who was our former alderman at large. You were my alderman. And my fellow denizen of Ward 10. And now you're, I'm Ward 13, the alderman with just one person, a majority of one. <laughs> the, one of the reasons we're going to be talking about the Memorial Day and the Memorial Day Parade. And one of the reasons I wanted to share those pictures of you, it's not just about memories, but there were many veterans in that picture. Uh, at the last picture, my father, uh, U.S. Navy, World War II, DAV, Disabled American Vet, my brother Guy, 24 years in the Air Force, and I did 50 months in the army, and I always get 50 months because I had to do months. those two extra months. To Not win. years, but months. <laughs> <laughs> they were a long, long time. And my father, my father's family, and the hometown we came out of before we came to Manchester, uh, I think they came, they were given a land grant south of here, 1720 by George II, and all the graves are done. I never mention it now because some of my free state or uh, we won't talk about that but uh, when you go into the historical society you can see a letter from 1745 that's to be handled with gloves it's to the corporal Whittemore to muster a group you know of militiamen to go fight the what's then called the Indians and the French we'd call them Native Americans now and so my family service not just starts before before the French and Indian War because it goes right into the present day. I've always been, my father believed a citizen, whether you're male or female, should give at least a couple or three years to the military, to our country. And we had relatives, uh, Samuel Whittemore is the is the official patriot of Massachusetts. Then we had somebody who was in the War of 1812, and then we missed the Mexican-American War. And I guess uh, my family was well enough to buy in the Civil War for $300. You could buy somebody to go there. <laughs> but my sister Debbie, my sister Debbie was the little moonbeam be in the pictures. And Mike enlisted her in the Women's Army Corps in 1971. And... My brother Guy, I was in the Cold War. I just missed Gulf, the Gulf mm. War. And uh, Guy was in Kosovo, and so was my niece. My niece was our only officer. She's a captain, a nurse. And I have two nieces, a niece and her husband, uh, now in the Air Force. So we, and my, her, I don't know what you call uh, your nephew in law, has been in Iraq a couple of times. And so I have a long history of service. And uh, that's why I asked you to be here today. Because that one, the one war we seem to have missed. Oh, we, I, I had my my mother's father was in the Spanish American War, oh. <laughs> and my grandfather was World War One. 
He wow. went through all, was gassed. He was, uh, he went through all the battles, Sama Hill, Be Bella Wood, and he was with the the Rainbow, Div the Yankee Division. And uh, we missed the Civil War, and that's where Memor uh, Memorial Day comes out of. I think when I was a kid, some of the older teachers still called it Decoration Day. Decoration. And I was either in kindergarten or the first grade in 1965, which was the 100th anniversary of the end of the Civil War. And they had us take the little flags and put them on the graves of just the Civil War huh? people in back of the Varney School. But now it's no longer Decoration Day, it's Memorial Day. And who better to explain Memorial Day and get a word in edgewise from your loquacious host than Mike Lopez. Well, thank you very much uh, uh, for the audience. Uh, I'm a past commander of the Manchester Veterans Council, and uh, I've been working with them for a number of years and teaching some of the young veterans that are coming back to uh, take over the duties of providing for Memorial Day Parade and Veterans Day Parade and other things and activities in the city of Manchester. Uh, before I start and tell you a little bit about Memorial Day uh, Parade, uh, I do want to give credit to Dan Beliveau, who's the commander uh, of the Manchester Veterans Council, and Sam Codwell, who's the adjutant or the administrative officer, uh, who take I give credit for putting this program together because, unfortunately, they're working, uh, making a living today. So uh, I'm sort of pitching in, and but they did all the work. So if you can. Sort of get into that. John, picture. are you? Can you zoom in on this? Yeah, I got it, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Monday, uh, May 25th, Memorial Day, and I tell you a little bit of what's going to happen in the morning because the parade is in the afternoon. People get it confused between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Right, that's and, that's and quite so true. Memorial Day, uh, the veterans from uh, the various service groups. Uh, which is uh, the American Legion Sweeney Post, uh, Post 79, VFW, DAV, and Post 43 in American Legion. All of us do things in the morning to remember because the flag is, is supposed to be at half-mast until noon. Uh, and so, like, uh, let's, take the, let's take the Sweeney Post. Uh, the Sweeney Post goes around to 22 different squares that are named after veterans that the city of Manchester has named. And that would be it for another show. Uh, we can go through the squares. And they go to each of these squares to remember uh, those veterans who have given their life for our country and do a, a salute to them and do a, a round of volleys uh, for each, uh, each square that they participate in. At 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, working with the uh, AOH, which is the Order of Hibernias, and, and Sweeney Post, it goes along long memories because uh, uh, Henry Sweeney Jason... Sweeney was from our ward, was he not? Or is, or yes. No, uh, well, yes, Ward 10. Ward That's correct. Because sometimes it changes. Because we got that, a, that we always got, changes we got, that board. We got a Sweeney Park over there. Right, That's Sweeney named Park after, that right? I always went by to when yep. we west on the way yep. to west. And so... Uh, what happens is that at 9 o'clock in the morning, we have uh, church services over at Old St. Joe's Cemetery. And uh, everybody is welcome to that that wants to go. Uh, and you don't have to be Catholic or anything. You just go and, and, and look at the ceremony and be part of the ceremony there. Uh, Henry J. Sweeney Post uh, uh, sends an honor guard and, and, and uh, carries the flags and rifles and marches in and posts the colors and, and the, and, and the uh, bishop will be there. So it's quite a ceremony. And then after that, they go back to the squares. Uh, Post 79 does similar at other cemeteries and in, in some squares. And 43 does the same thing along with the VFW 8214. Uh, so we try to we try to do everything by noon, okay? Uh, the uh, VA hospital also has uh, something going on around 11 o'clock uh, at the VA hospital. So, and then in the afternoon we got the parade. Uh, and we all march down Elm Street. What time does the parade the begin? The parade is at 2 o'clock. Lineup is at 1.30, uh, Webster and Elm Street. And we go, <coughs> excuse me, we march down to uh, Veterans Memorial Park. And there we have 
uh, ceremonies. We ask people to join us. To, so if you see the parade go by you and you have nothing to do and you, you want to go see some of the ceremonies at the park, get down to Veterans Memorial Park. And it only takes about a half hour. We have uh, uh, guest speakers there, and and uh, and the band will will play the national anthem. Um, so it's um, it's 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 a long day for the veterans, but uh, you know it's very it, important. It's very day. important that we remember uh, our brothers and sisters who have given their life for their country, and uh, and and we do that. And, and we, we, we go all out. We start at 6 o'clock in the morning on Memorial Day, and we work all the way up until after the parade. So uh, it's a long day, and we have a lot of uh, – well, we have – I say a lot. We used to have a lot of World War II veterans. We have some now. Right. When I used to take my father DAV, it seemed like everybody was World War II veterans, and the Vietnam vets were the younger guys. Now I – that's my health care provider, the VA hospital, and – the, the World War II vets and the Korean vets are few and far between. Now the the uh, Vietnam vets are the older guys, and, and it's surprising how quickly we all get old. <laughs> oh my! Oh yeah, and, yeah. But the I'm just struck by yeah. the veterans coming in from Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh yeah, and, 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 and because and, of people like you, Mike, they are, have a much better uh, system to come into. I'll just tell you. I'm in a group with uh, Vietnam vets and other groups, you know, guys going right down to uh, the most recent wars. And it's it's funny, some of the vets will be complaining, well, it took me eight week, months for them to process my paperwork. And we'll have some guy that was like in the Gulf of Tonkin in 64, <laughs> <laughs> laughing, eight weeks. It took me 40, you know, 40 years. It's the it was the contributions of people like yourself who came back from that the Vietnam era veterans. Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm willing to help anybody that yeah. comes back because I was in the same situation when I came back from Vietnam, and I know a lot of my friends were the same, and and it was the World War II veterans that got got us involved in in the American Legion, and we helped them, and the Korean War veterans, and. And so now we're turning it over sort of to the uh, Gulf War veterans, the Afghanistan, right. Iraq veterans. And it's very important because it's uh, it's something that it's not only tradition, but it's a service uh, uh, not only to our country, but to our community that's important. And that's why the Manchester Veterans Council continues to operate and, and does the uh, Memorial Day and Veterans Day Parade plus other fundraising activities, uh, different things at uh, Veterans Park that we have, we have done over a number of years. It was the Manchester Veterans Council that built the POW MIA monument right. at, uh, that we raised the funds, no city funds. But back to the parade, that's what we're here for. Uh, the Board of Mayor and Alderman have been invited. The mayor has been invited. Being the chief executive of the city, he'll be a guest speaker. Uh, I believe Kelly a Kayot will be there. Uh, we'll have a guest speaker from Liberty House, Ken Howard, uh, who does a wonderful job at oh, yes, Liberty I mean, House. Yes, uh, great he job. struggles all the time, but, you know, he's dedicated. And, and, and Liberty House is a, a place for homeless veterans that uh, uh, need help for a s short time in order my, to get done their feet. My viewers know well about Liberty House. Bill Barry's daughter came up with the idea, remember, for the great fundraiser that we had. They wanted to raise $1,000 because Bill, I think, marched in uh, the Veterans Day Parade, or it might have been the Memorial Day Parade, and his young daughter, Lauren, asked him, well, what, what not next? And, you know, Bill, well, you, you tend to forget, you know? But she says, you can't forget. We have to do something. So Bill reached out to the park side. And the fifth grade class decided, well, we're going to make Liberty House. And they had all sorts of raffles, movies. They wanted to raise just $1,000. They managed to raise over $6,500. Oh, it's yeah. It's amazing, amazing. Well, and that's it. It's, it's, such, it's, a, it's a great it's, organization. It's not a great, great, and it's good for young people to yes. get involved because they get really, really involved in veterans. I've had a lot of, a lot of high school kids, uh, a lot of veterans uh, – uh, organizations to include Sweeney Post. We'll go to high schools or we'll go to grade schools and we teach them how to fold the flag, how to honor the American flag. That's part of the Americanism that we have. Right. Uh, um, and so it, it's very important and, and, and brings me to a point on Veterans Day. If you know, if you're out watching a parade and you're sitting on a curb and you see the American flag come by, please stand up. 
Right. You we know. were brought up. Uh, uh, you were brought. You were a little, just a couple of years older than me. We were. I always am surprised when people don't take their flags down or let them get weathered because we were. Brought, you're not. They actually taught us that in school. Right. How do you? And then you're in the military on the flag when you're on the flag detail and doing everything to see a flag getting old or out at. I got used to old uh, at night, you know, not taking it down, but seeing a old flag. I don't say it's offensive, but <laughs> well, I, I think more. more it, it, I don't feel well. More about education, it. Yeah. you know. I mean, but uh, it is people yeah. need to know. Yeah, like you know, I mean, Memorial High does a great ceremony. Right. That, uh, I think they have one on the twenty sixth of the uh, of, of next week. Um, that they honor their veterans that went to school there, and, and they they have a very good program up there. And I'm sure the other high schools do too. And we've been to we've been to all of them. It's just each one does something different, and that's okay, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're honoring the veterans that graduated from uh, their high school, and that's wonderful that they remember them, you know. Uh, so. Uh, uh, there'll be there'll be other guest speakers there. Dave Quinn, who is the state chairman of the employee support group of the, of the guard, uh, he'll be a guest speaker. And then the leaf rain uh, ceremony will be uh, done in firing of the volleys and taps. Taps is going to be by uh, West High School, uh, and they rotate it. The three high schools rotate it every year. Uh, how what position they are in the parade and who's going to be at the park so they tell us and which is good because they keep track of it because a lot of the kids they they, they like to play at the memorial uh the taps and and uh, national anthem at the park and so they do a good job there so uh, bill morin who uh, is a chaplain he'll be he'll give an invocation and, and a benediction afterwards uh, the parade is uh, monday uh, it's supposed to be a good day monday afternoon two o'clock you come on down, come down to the park, bring your lawn chair if you want, uh, come and watch the parade, and uh, enjoy yourself afterwards at a barbecue, and I mean, that's what it's all about, but we we dedicate ourselves to those who have given given our, their life to our country and our community, and as you, as you go down to Veterans Park, you look at the World War II monument, you'll see 13,000 names on there. Oh, yes. There's a lot My of, father a lot of is on. The man that you saw is on there, Claude J. Hopwood Jr. Yep. And Claude J. Hopwood Sr. You know, fought on the Western Front, front in France gassed and uh, he went and let my his only son and only child join the he want my father wanted to be a marine just like i did but i was colorblind i was telling mike about this earlier yeah. Uh, yeah. you can't be in combat arms if you're colorblind but he joined the navy and uh he there he's on there my my fa my uh my uh, grandfather down in the town we came from, he's on the library there, and they're going to have. Yeah. Uh, we come from Litchfield. Yeah, let me and, make one uh, one correction I made because I, I just noticed I said eleven o'clock at the VA. It's ten thirty in the morning at the VA. So it's going to be ten thirty yeah, at, at the VA. At the VA, and uh, they'll they'll have uh, a ceremony up there. Yeah, it's going to be outside, but in case of bad weather, but I don't think it's going to be bad weather. From what I understand, it's supposed to be a good day. So. Uh, but in, in the event they had bad weather at the VA, they usually go inside and, and, and do it because of the veterans. Now, Mike, it's just not, you know, veterans that are going to participate. It's all oh, of us. Everybody, everyone. Everybody. Everyone. Everybody. I mean, uh, you look at some of the other countries uh, that are today, I mean, what if, if we weren't a, a good fighting force in the United States, what kind of country would we have today? And we have to, we have to recognize our forefathers who – who had the vision and, and the courage to move forward, and and and, and that's what it's all about. It's Just a short story. Uh, we'll get back to my uh, now former ex-girlfriend was Russian and it came to. She's she's only 35 years old. I just you know they celebrate uh, VE Day on the net, the not May 8th but May 9th because you know Joe Stalin he he has things his way. Mm -hmm. But you know on one of the VE days like 10 years ago she called me up in tears crying. And because in Russia, and and all of the former Soviet Union, even Ukraine and everything, the, the the incredible loss of life that is still so alive today to them. And Memorial Day comes out of the the worst war the United States ever fought was it's against itself, the Civil War, the most losses. 
And that's why we have these days, so they don't forget that loss. Because those people, you know, when uh, Victoria calls me crying, and she is the grandchild of people that went through that. You know, it was my father that w was a veteran too. She understands fully the loss, all the blood shed to save her country. And we need to, it's important for us too. Oh, it's uh, absolutely, absolutely. To it's pass to, that along. To pass it along to the young generation and, and, and educate them and give them the history of, uh, you know, it, it, it's just a side note, uh, uh, the cemetery, the veteran cemetery. In uh, Boscawin? Uh, yeah, up at uh, Bos Boscawin, I call it. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, they'll have... Uh, They'll have the ceremony on right. the 30th, the actual day, uh, oh, Memorial are you, Day. Are you going to attend that? No, I, I, I won't be attending that. I'll be out of town. But okay. uh, uh, so, but they'll have uh, quite a ceremony up there. And if you have never been to a more moving uh, atmosphere, is it, being to a, a uh, state cemetery or a national cemetery oh. on Memorial Day. And then you'll get the true meeting of what freedom is all about. Oh, our, visiting Arlington. Absolutely. Something. Absolutely. And so they'll be um, uh, doing that up there on the 30th. Uh, so, You know, the, the, well, okay. Go Just ahead. One quick, what people don't understand, the, the centrality of people like you, New Hampshire vets, because of New Hampshire, uh, uh, Veterans Day is celebrated on November 11th That's correct. because of New Hampshire yeah. vets. So I'm sure you were part of that, how important New Hampshire is. Mike, I'd like to talk about another uh, subject while I have you here, about hope for New Hampshire. But do you want to finish this? Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we only have about five minutes. Okay, so. well, we want to finish this up, and, and okay. I want to, want to get that shot of that photo there, John? which, which is... Uh, Monday, the 25th, at 2 p.m., a parade starts. Lineup is at 1.30 over for a nice sunny day, and we have the three high school bands and the middle, middle school bands also in the parade. So five bands be in the parade. So uh, we have a lot of military units to be in the parade. Uh, we have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, Vietnam veterans, uh, motorcycles, thunder, Thunder and... Um, you, uh, you're like asking a, me with my yeah, memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I anyways, had two people scheduled Rolling Thunders, time Rolling Thunders. <laughs> rolling Thunders. Uh, thunder. yeah. uh, they're supposed to be there. So uh, we, we welcome everybody to come down and watch the parade. And those that can make it, uh, go to Veterans Park afterwards for the ceremony. And those that can stand up, please respect the flag that's coming down that uh, gave us the freedom uh, that our country has and I want to thank you very much and, and for information go to the Facebook site Ward 13 with John Hoppin and we'll have this posted we have just a, like a couple more minutes there is an event on May 28th the uh, an anonymous people if you would like to talk about that from Hope for New Hampshire what is Hope for New Hampshire first we'll talk about the event and then yeah. Okay. okay. We're done with Memorial Day, right? Okay. Well, we're not done with it, but well, how long is this going to be? We'll have a couple, a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just like to like to uh, give a little plug for a good friend of mine, uh, Melissa Cruz, who's been working on Hope for New Hampshire. Hope for New Hampshire is a program that uh, we have been working on, and she has been working on for a long time. Um, and they have a great program uh, on the 28th of, of May at the Palace Theater uh, to see the film, The Anonymous People. This is uh, people that are alcoholic and drug overdose. And as everyone knows, in the state of New Hampshire, we have a great academic uh, of uh, uh, over 321 people that have died from, from drugs and 94 in Hillbrook, Hillsborough County alone. Um, this is a film uh, that's going to be shown so that uh, we're trying to uh, work with the two outlets of, of uh, the treatments to give that third leg, so to speak, of one-to-one right. of -one on uh, people helping people. And uh, that's what it's all about is 
those people that get out of the treatment uh, okay. treatment centers, you know, they're in there for whether two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, or five weeks. It doesn't make any difference. Once they get out, they're all alone. Right. They have nobody. You know, Mike, we still have, you know, I get a slot to one. Why don't we tape a, a special, and we'll talk about this. Okay. Uh, we can give 50 minutes, and we can put it on the, jo- the, the site. And you have your own Facebook page. Yeah. We can do with the film and put, a, you know, a short film about okay. this 15 minutes short Very good. show. But just tell them once again. Once about again, but this May is, 28th. This is May 20th. I don't know if you can get that, can you? May 28th, uh, we'll be at the Palace Theater and the film, The Anonymous People, and 6 p.m. And it's $10. It's uh, $10 to get in, or a friend can give you $10. Anybody can give you $10 to go in, but it's a very important. It's not just for people that have addiction. Right. It's for everybody. It affects our community. Yes. And so mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, you're all welcome. We want to fill that theater because this is a very important thing for our community. It is. And we are going to tape a short 15-minute on this, and you can access it at Ward uh, Ward 13 with John Hopwood on Mike Lopez's Facebook page, and it'll also be online on YouTube. Thank you very much, Ward uh, 13. I was going to say Ward 10. That always gets Tammy Simmons mad. <laughs> <laughs> then at the wedding bells, one house where lovers dwell, three little kids for the flavor. 